Doc Talk is brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, Sure Trace Mineral Supplementation by Timed Injection. Hi there and welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University and we're really glad that you joined us. We're going to have Dr. Gretchen Grissett, who is a veterinarian here at the Veterinary Health Center, talk to us today about urinary obstruction in goats. It's bound to be a great show, so stay tuned. We started using Multimin about four years ago. We started out first in our own cow herd and our own heifer replacement heifer program just to uh, see how it would work, um, experiment with it. We don't like to put a new pro product out there with our clients unless we've tried it ourselves or there's a lot of data behind it that we like. Um, we had really good results with it our first year, uh, really in, uh, were happy with the way things worked. Uh, so we decided to start using our clients and we have been now for three years and I would say 90 to 95 percent of our clients use Multimin. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Normycin LA, Normectrum Plus, 1% and Porum, the practical choice for your herd. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, it's great to have you here, uh, Dr. Grissett, and Dr. Gretchen Grissett is joining me today. She is a doctor of veterinary medicine and she works here at the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University over in our food animal mm -hmm. side. And we're going to talk about urinary obstruction in goats. Yes, sir. And, you know, let's just start out with, you know, what is this? So, urethiasis, as we commonly call it, same thing as bladder stones in humans and people. Um, basically, they're exactly what they are, is they're stones formed of different minerals and concretions and those sorts of things. They end up causing a variety of problems and issues for these guys, but they'll actually um, either obstruct their urethra, so they obstruct their ability to urinate, um, or can cause some other problems. Typically, so the, the ruminant, whenever they were designed, um, right. the anatomy was kind of, I'm not exactly sure what they were thinking, but um, <laughs> they have a very narrow urethra and ends up kind of predisposing these guys to getting an obstruction. Um, the two main sites, um, in goats and um, sheep mostly, um, they have the, urethral process or vermiform appendage that hangs off of right. the uh, urethra itself on the end of the penis. And you know, when you look at that, that's just a few millimeters in diameter. So um, it wasn't really designed very well whenever God made these creatures. That, right. That's a common sight to obstruct. And then also they, their, their penis has the sigmoid flexure and so it makes this big S-shaped curve that, that's another sight that they'll commonly obstruct out there. Um, but for the most part, it's, um, forms from different things that they're eating in their ration, those sorts of things that can cause stones. Um, they can also be on certain pastures that are going to make them at risk, um, such as calcium oxalate stones. Um, you can get on different pastures that have a lot of calcium or, or silicate and have stones of that, of that form. But, you know, for the most part, it's usually a result of um, what they're eating on their, in their diet. So these, these uh, two big places that they can, I mean, they're kind of, no, two reasons. One, their their anatomy lends itself to stone mm -hmm. formation, but then the diets and the different production practices that we Correct. put these animals Correct. through, you know, we're kind of <laughs> putting them in right. a place where we're going to see these urinary obstruction where they can't urinate or, and, and for people out there, you know, like kidney stones and things like mm -hmm. that and the human side of things can be somewhat similar, but this one's actually stopping your right, flow. and they can get kidney stones as well. They can actually form there, but probably the most common sites is going to be on that those two different sites that I mostly talked about. Um, and then you can kind of see it and kind of, as you're saying, in the production species, you know, they're um, these guys, they're, they're feeder lambs or feeder goats, and they're pushing these guys to, to go out to market. There. Maximum performance. Right, exactly. Not watching the calcium phosphorus. Correct, fishes, correct. And, things like um, that. and then you also have the other scenario where um, goats have become very popular as pets. And they're, they're cute and they're fun to, to play with and feed, and you know, so people can kind of overfeed them and predispose them to these issues as well. <laughs> awesome. Well, this is a great topic. I can't wait to get into more with you. And we're going to be right back with Dr. Gretchen Grissett talking about urinary obstruction in goats. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're really glad that you joined us. This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. Dr. Dan here. Whether I'm driving up and down the roads covering the state of Kansas, or I'm getting between Riley and Manhattan for my job, I'm driving a Ford truck. I'd like you to come out and visit my friends here at Dick Edwards Ford. 
they have a truck that will suit your needs. Whether you're looking for power with a Power Stroke diesel, or if you're looking for fuel efficiency with the new EcoBoost engine, they got a truck that's just right for you. They're located two miles east of the Town Center Mall in Manhattan, Kansas, and they'll bend over backwards to help you. And I'll see you down the road. Here in Dallas, we're proud that our vehicles use an advanced biofuel called biodiesel. It's made from renewable resources like soybean oil, canola oil, even recycled cooking oil. This year, biodiesel will displace almost a billion gallons of fossil fuel nationwide. Our air is cleaner, our economy is stronger, and America's more energy independent. It's working here, it can work in your community. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. Beef producers need a practical choice when antibiotic therapy is required. More than ever, they are reaching for non-prescription Noramycin 300 LA from Norbrook. Specially formulated to produce sustained antibiotic blood levels up to four days in cattle, Noramycin 300 LA delivers economic, broad-spectrum disease management for pneumonia, shipping fever, pink eye, wound infections, and foot rot. See for yourself why Norbrook's Noramycin 300 LA is the practical choice for your herd. This segment is brought to you by Rotomix, manufactured in the USA and designed for feeding performance in the feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow-calf operations. Hi there and welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University and I'm joined by Dr. Gretchen Grissett, who's a veterinarian at the Veterinary Health Center here at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. We're talking about urinary obstruction in goats and so we've talked about why we have them because of the anatomy and, and the production practices that we put these animals through that can help uh, create these situations. But what are some of the things producers should be looking for as far as obstruction or what are the clinical signs? Okay, so early on in the disease course, you know, you can kind of, they're not really specific signs. Um, you know, the goat just may be off a little bit, a little depressed, a little anorexic, a little off feed, not eating, not coming up to the bunk like you normally would. Um, and then as it further progresses or the animal actually will obstruct, um, they will vocalize quite frequently. Um, and when I say that, it's because they're um, trying to, to strain to urinate, so they're, they're vocalizing quite frequently because it hurts and they can't urinate. Their bladder's big, it's just like us. You know, we, we gotta go and they can't, so they physically can't. And then you'll also frequently see these individuals, they're posturing to urinate. And, you know, they're constantly kind of camped out with their back legs, just trying to go and vocalizing. And then. From there, it can kind of go several different ways. Okay. So they can be blocked, um, and you know, hopefully you catch it at that point in time and you bring it to us, mm -hmm. and they're just going to be straining and they can't urinate, and that's fine. This is an emergency situation. Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. As soon as you you notice signs like that, you need to be calling your local veterinarian and be getting on the phone with them. Gotcha. Um, you have one way where you can actually rupture the urethra. And that can be anywhere along from inside of the, where it's exiting the bladder or anywhere along that pathway. So the ure urethra is from the, the bladder to the end of the penis? Correct, okay. correct. So, um, you know, if that happens, typically what'll happen is they'll get a lot of swelling on the bottom side of their belly. We call it um, edema. Um, but you'll see it can be kind of mostly on one side. It can go from, you know, their testicles up to their, their sternum or, you know. Is that the old term water belly or? Is, yeah, yeah, yep, kind of yep. get that. Look yeah, kind of. Um, okay. But yeah, they'll certainly get a lot of edema, and so mm -hmm. you know, usually when I see that, I think, well, the urethra is ruptured, and there's ways we can go about treating that. Um, then the next scenario would be they can actually rupture their bladder, and then that's kind of where they'll say the water belly term as well okay, too. Yep. Um, and then you know, when you do that, usually they're not vocalizing, but then at that point, these animals are getting very sick. Um, you know, you've got your urine's not supposed to be inside of your abdomen, so right. these guys will will be very depressed if you let this go on for a couple days. Um, once you get to that point, there's things that we can do, but obviously it's, it's not an ideal situation if you have no urine in your, yeah. yeah. Um, and then you can also have points where it can, as we mentioned earlier, obstruct in the kidneys or the ureter, which connects the kidney to the bladder. Um, and you can even pop, 
ureters or kidneys and those sorts of things, which is going to end up with the same scenario. You know, you're going to have urine in your, in your abdomen and um, suboptimal for the animal for sure. So let me re refresh these. We can have the animal blocked and they're mm -hmm. straining, uh, rupture the urethra, rupture the bladder, or actually rupture the urethra or the kidney. Mm -hmm. Correct. So the big thing is, is recognize it right. early. Right, right. Certainly. The earlier you recognize it, the, the better off it's going to be and the more options that we have to have a successful outcome and treatment. Great. Well, you know, the next place we're going to go then when we come back from break That's is right. <laughs> talk about these treatments and what Dr. Grissett and other local veterinarians would recommend if you have a block goat. We sure appreciate you watching Doc Talk. We're going to take a break here for a minute and we'll be back. This tip brought to you by Batrol 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable, now approved for use in controlling BRD in high risk cattle. Batrol 100, right the first time, whether it's controlling BRD in high risk cattle or treating BRD. Hi folks, it's Dr. Dan from Doc Talk. Thanks for joining me for today's On the Farm Tip. We're going to talk about extra label drug usage. Labeled drug usage is when I pick up the bottle, there's a label on it. And when I look at the label, it's going to tell me how much to give, how often, and the route of administration. Route of administration might be sub-Q, IM, or, or intravenous. Now, anytime you change the route of administration, or if you change the dosage, or you change the time in which you give those drugs, that's called extra label drug usage. We can't do that without the written consent of a veterinarian. So we need to follow label directions. If we don't follow label directions, we can wind up with antibiotic residues in the meat. And so when we do an extra label drug usage, we need the veterinarian involved. Thanks for watching today's On the Farm Tip. I'm Dr. Dan, and I'll see you down the road. Hi, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD TV. Join the team, the Beef Quality Assurance Team. Getting BQA certified shows you're committed to practices that produce the highest quality beef in the world. And by visiting BQA.org, you can take the online certification course at a time that fits your schedule and from the comfort of your home or office. You'll also find lots of helpful tips on improving animal health and animal handling practices. Get certified, BQA certified, because it's about doing the right thing. Visit BQA.org today and become a member of the BQA team. I'm Dennis Tebow. My wife and I, Kathy, are the owners of Wolf Creek Cattle Company. We have grown to approximately 70 bulls. I'm Reese Arnold. I'm the livestock manager at Wolf Creek Cattle Company. You know, these are not just like normal cattle. These cattle, they're hauled anywhere from, you know, 8 to 10 hours a day across the United States and asked to perform. The Multiman 90 keeps them kind of level. It maintains and balances their system. The stress levels less when, you know, when everything's right and working right, then they're working right. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. This segment is brought to you by the Graham School for Cattlemen with over 100 years of continuous service to the cattle industry. To find out more, visit us online at grahamschool.com. Hi there and welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Gretchen Grissett. And both of us are here at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. And Dr. Grissett is a DVM, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine, over in the Veterinary Health Center. And today we are talking about urinary obstruction in, in goats. And we've talked about the causes. We've talked about the reasons why, some of the things that can happen. We need to get that goat to a veterinarian immediately. So I bring my goat to you. What are we going to do? Well, first and foremost, uh, Dr. Dan, um, probably what I would recommend in any case, in any scenario, is the your veriform appendage or urethral process that I talked about earlier, mm -hmm. that um, little part hanging off. Yep. Um, usually we'll amputate that. That's one of the more common spots. Okay. Easy to do, obviously. Um, pretty easy to amputate, but probably your success rate is going to be one in 10. And even if you do do that and it works, they're probably going to reobstruct. So. Okay. You know, first and foremost, I'll, I'll try that. If nothing else, I can at least give the goat some relief pretty quickly and make him a lot happier and a lot more comfortable. And then I kind of place it into kind of two big categories. You know, if you've got a very valuable, um, 
ram or buck or something of that sort that you're wanting to salvage his ability to breed and those sorts of things. Or if it's a, a valued pet and you want to make sure that this animal is going to live and have a nice long life, um, then I'll usually go ahead and recommend a tube cystostomy. So All that's right, a big fancy word. <laughs> Explain that. All right, so that's a big fancy word for basically saying we, we surgically go in mm -hmm. and we place a tube inside of the bladder and then have the urine diverted outside of the body until we can get the stones to acidify that are in the urethra, which is what's allowing the animal to urinate. Um, and then you leave that in there until you can kind of get that problem taken care of, let everything heal up, and then you remove that tube, and then ideally the animal should be able to urinate. Gotcha. So, um, so you're just rerouting the urine until you can break up the stones or the, the obstruction correct, in correct. the urethra, and then you correct. put them back on the... Most of these stones, you know, they're about the size of sand. So, okay. you know, it's not like you can just go in there and rotorooter it out, basically. Um, you know, it's gonna, it takes a little bit of time to be able to get those stones to clear um, and do them with the least amount of pain and complication for the animal as well. So what if this is a meat goat? So if this is a meat goat, I'm going to say, okay, well, let's, let's get them patched up and, let, and let's get them sold. Um, and then that's the case, I'll usually recommend doing something that we call a perineal urethrostomy or a PU. Right. So that basically is a big fancy word for, um, we'll actually basically put a hole in the urethra kind of just below the anus. So, mm -hmm. um, and basically they'll kind of pee like a girl. Okay. So the, we're hoping, and usually it is, the obstruction's gonna be farther down from that and they can you know urinate out the back end. Gotcha. Now to do this, the urethra is kind of tissue that you, you, you irritate it, make it angry, it's not gonna be very happy about that. So you know, you wanna get these animals sold because if you try to keep them around, they're gonna have secondary complications such so, as a stricture and those sorts of things. Um, so, you know, if you do this, you can usually save the life of the animal, but it, it's kind of a patch and go kind of process. More of a, a salvage right. uh, meat goat type correct, process correct. Uh, in time to get them to slaughter. Right. Great, well, we're gonna take another break. When we come back, we're gonna talk a little bit more about treatment, and then we're gonna to get to how you can prevent having urinary obstruction in your goats with Dr. Gretchen Grissett. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're sure glad you joined us. This segment is brought to you by Lalaman Animal Nutrition, dedicated to the development and production of natural and differential solutions for animal nutrition. When a cattle producer has a mortality on their farm, it is very important to dispose of the animal properly. With Ag AM in Kansas, I'm Devin Stewart. A veterinarian with the Beef Cattle Institute talked about this in his presentation at a cow-calf seminar hosted by K-State's College of Veterinary Medicine. Dan Fries explains that the proper disposal of a carcass is extremely important for multiple reasons. We can call a rendering truck um, and they come pick up our animal. A lot of times there is a small fee involved. One of the issues with rendering lately is increased regulation. We also have composting it is a viable option and a legal option. We have burial is a legal option and we have incineration. With Ag AM in Kansas, I'm Devin Stewart. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. Cow-calf, stalker, and feedlot producers know that effective parasite control improves overall herd performance and profitability. Norbrook offers a comprehensive, economical line of boron and injectable parasiticides for every livestock operation. Consult with your local animal health supplier to set up a program that protects your investment and brings larger cattle checks this fall. See for yourself why the Noromectin line from Norbrook is the practical choice for your herd. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Hi there and welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University with Dr. Gretchen Grissett, who's a veterinarian in the Veterinary Health Center. Sure been nice to have you here today. I appreciate you having me. <laughs> and we're talking about the plugged goat or urinary obstruction 
and happens quite frequently, but there are some things we can do to prevent it, right? Right, there sure are. Um, I guess first and foremost, what I'm going to talk about is nutrition. So obviously, if you've got a production, production goat herd, you know, you're trying to feed these guys as best as you can and, and get them ready for slaughter. So you're trying to put on that weight and feed efficiency and those sorts of things. Unfortunately, that's kind of the diet that really predisposes these guys to forming stones. Um, so, you know, those high grain rations, that's actually with a lot of phosphorus and a lot of magnesium. Those are some of the big players that will um, precipitate stone formation. So automatically putting them on that kind of a ration is going to make them predisposed to it. Now I understand everybody's not going to stop doing those sort of production practices and get away right. from that. But you know there are some things that you can do. You can increase the amount of forage or hay in that ration and that way um, you can increase ruminations and that sort of stuff and kind of provide a different way for phosphorus to be excreted. Um, it's usually if it's not excreted through the saliva it's going to be secreted through urine. So if you can do something to kind of provide a different way for that to be excreted, that's ideal. There's some other things that you can kind of do. Um, adding ammonium chloride to the ration can sort of help. Um, I think they tend to recommend, you know, half a percent to two percent of the ration to, to help those sorts of things to, um, basically it's a urinary acidifier that will right. help. It, it doesn't make sense to feed something that's kind of basic. Right, right. But it does acidify the urine correct. and helps helps prevent those stones from occurring. Right, correct, correct. Um, so, so there are options like that that you can add to the ration. Um, even just increasing salt in the ration will help out a lot because the more you drink, the more you're going to urinate and you're going to dilute all those little particles like phosphorus and such in your urine. So um, you add some salt to the ration and then right. they drink more. Right. And it'll help kind of dilute things out hopefully and it'll prevent stone formations. Cool. Um, and then obviously if you're in an area that's got um, you know, silicate pastures or those sorts of things, obviously getting them off of those kind of predisposing pastures would be the um, ideal thing to do. but. That's really not a problem that we're going to have here in Kansas. And then obviously um, for the kind of the pet goat owners I always kind of touch on is, you know, those guys, they're, they're pets. They're there to look cute. You know, I would feed them mostly a roughage diet. Um, right. And, you know, people don't think about snacks. You know, I have people, they're feeding them honey buns and, and those <laughs> sorts of things. But you don't think about it. Those, that's sugar. So that's still going to predispose them to forming stones. So, you know, I do a lot of talking about diet, you know, and people want to say, well, I feed it strawberries. Okay, still sugars. You know, yeah, right. it's, it's healthy, but, you know, it still can potentially be bad for your goat. Um, so, you know, I talk a lot about, you know, um, decreasing a lot of those snacks and treats and being sure that you get kind of goat friendly treats and those sorts of things or, or at least limit those down a little bit. That's awesome. So. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat the tin can, right? In the yeah. cartoon. <laughs> well, we appreciate you being here today and spending some time. It was a thank great show. Thank you for show. having me. And thank you for watching Doc Talk. Remember, if you want to know more about what Dr. Griss and I do here at Kansas State University, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. Remember to always work with your local practitioner. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. You've been watching Doc Talk. We appreciate you watching the show, and I'll see y'all down the road. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, sure trace mineral supplementation by timed injection. Mike Davis, owner operator of the Cooney Ranch, in Southeast Oregon. We're running right at 700 head of mother cows. We've been using Multimin for about five years now. Here at the Cooney, we're selenium deficient, uh, manganese, copper. I know those those are three of the big ones that we are short on. And with the multi-min, I believe that it's helping to up that response. We all do a mineral pack. When we first put it out, they'll eat a lot of it. And as they get it built up in their system, they'll back off of it. The Multiman probably gives them an extra boost to get those other trace minerals going. We give the calves a shot of Multiman at branding. 
And then the calves will be followed up with another dose of Multiman in the fall when we wean. And then in the spring, before we turn out, we'll give the calves another shot. We give all the cows once a year, we give them a shot of Multiman when we process in the fall. The bulls, we process them in the fall too, and give them a dose of Multiman then. We try and get the bulls in again before we turn them out with the cows and just give them a dose then, hoping to get a little better preg rate, efficiency out of the bulls. With our replacement heifers, because I'm trying to keep around 100 to 125 replacement heifers, so we'll give them a dose of Multiman before we turn the bulls in with them. Last year we were right at a 98% breed up. Um, it could be a lot due to the Multiman. With Multiman use, everything's been better. The ease of calving, the milk rate, we've been doctoring less and less. Uh, scours, especially, all the cattle are healthier. I feel that Multiman's well worth buying. I believe we're getting what we need back out of it.